Welcome to the narrowboat that James built. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Well, I'm just about to finish the tiling on the fireplace. And apart from one or two kind of blemishes, I've got to say, it's come up really well. I'm very happy with the outcome. Because it's my first go of tiling and I've never, uh, well I said I've never tiled before but I've never used anything like decorative tiles like this either so it was tricky to line up the patterns. Um, a couple of people commented on the last video that one or two of them are upside down. I, got, I don't know what you're talking about, I've got literally no idea. Um, but there you go. Um, so that's it, that's done. And in 16 hours, I can apply the heat resistant grout, which again, I've never done, but how hard can it be? So there we have it, the fire's in, well, it's not, fireplace is in. Um, but I put the stove in that position because, well, I'm undecided still. And I know many of you have commented that it should be this way. I actually think it should be this way too. So um, I really just wanted to see if it looked a bit daft um, on an angle in a, uh, in a square. Luckily, I mean, I don't have any kind of OCD issues or anything like that, so I'm cool with this. Um, I know lots of people won't be, um, but for that, I'm fine. I'm not gonna mitre the end of this uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I don't fancy it. Secondly, I think it's going to ruin the stone. It's not going to, it's, it, it, it's not, it's a square stone. The pattern's not going to work and you'd have to put a trim around it for it to work nicely. Then I'd have to cut away the half. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really stick out that much. Um, there's quite a lot of, there's quite, there's quite a lot of room. I think the dinette's going to come up to about here. So yeah, there's, there's, there's kind of enough room. This is somewhere where I envisage there being a kind of, a lounge chair that may move around a little bit but this is an area that I can consider sitting of an evening by the fire so but in, in summary I'm really happy with how it's gone in um, as I said it was my first time tiling um, that seemed to go fine um, the adhesive well you saw what I had to do um, that worked okay though, I've, it's same with that I did it with mortar a, few, a, a year or so ago uh, and you kind of drive yourself mad with the proportions and after a while you just work, work out what the consistency is going to be and well, they're fine, they're not coming off. Um, the, uh, the spaces have all come out, I've cleaned them down a little bit, so yeah, that's good. I've got to say, it just looks so cool seeing the various layers that Solivtech have gone on about and I've seen it kind of on paper so many times and through the research of doing the fireplace but to actually physically see the layers in place so you got the 15 mil tile then the 12 mil cement board then the 25 mil cs board then the 12 mil air gap and then the backboard so the whole thing comes to 59 mil um and but yeah, just to see it in place, see it kind of uh, in in uh, in the flesh, as it were, is uh, is great. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the tiles. So, obviously, in doing this, they tell you to have porcelain tiles. The the two common tile types are ceramic and porcelain. Um, porcelain is tends to be thicker, and it tends to um, obviously have a much higher resistance to heat um, so that's why they recommend using it for these the uh, these tiles though are cement tiles and I had to do a bit of research to find out whether these were going to be suitable for a fireplace or a hearth now as I said before these were leftovers from when my parents did up there uh, downstairs cloakroom I've spoken to the company and they're happy for me to mention them it's a company called Sarsen Stone Group I'm guessing you can't get these tiles kind of in retail stores or anything like that. These are handmade cement tiles. I mean, they weigh a ton, but they're just absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, obviously you can, you can see for yourself there. But I, I did have to phone the company because I wasn't sure about the 
for heat resistance to them um, and they didn't come with a data sheet um, because I guess you know they, they didn't need to for what they were bought for um, but yeah the guy assured me that they've been used in fireplaces before they do have a high thermal quality because they're, they're, they're cement tiles um, he didn't ensure he didn't tell me I need any special treatment for them or anything they can just be there and uh, and be happy so let's see i'm hoping that's going to be the case i've still got to put on the uh, the heat proof uh, tile grout but um yeah that's just going to add to the look of it and at the moment they already look absolutely brilliant i'm really really happy with it and it just brings so much color into the boat so it's really good i'll leave a link for this company down on the details of the video so if you do want to get in touch with sars and stone group and look at what they've got this tile range is called salisbury and a couple of these tiles show you how handmade they are there's not an example there but a few of them on, have got in chalk on written on the back of them the the the, the guys the, the tile name and the date it was made in chalk like by hand you just don't see that stuff anymore so that's really good right moving on um Obviously, the stove does need to be installed. I'm not going to do that today. It's raining at the moment, and I need to cut a big hole in the roof. So uh, I'll do that on a day when it's not raining. But I've got all the bits and pieces I need for it. There's a whole load of stuff you need to, to get the flu right. Um, but yeah, so that's a next job to do, but not immediately. The immediate job to do, it doesn't sound that big, really. It's the nav lights in the bow I need to put the new ones in. So I've got these new LED ones, I need to put them in. I also need to put in the new um, uh, tunnel lights. So there's two of those, I need to take the other ones off. So that's that's a job to do today. Uh, I think I might need to clean the outside of the boat down as well, because when I take that light off, I know it's got rust and stuff behind it. So I'm gonna have to treat that before I put it on. And to do that, I'll probably have to clean the boat down a little bit. I've also got, um, Matt coming round, and Matt's going to go give a go on the sink. Right, so to dig this out, I can see that the this uh, nav light is behind that steel. So I can take out this bit of batten here, just above the steel. There we go. hoping that the holes line up. Please line up. Doesn't look like they're going to. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they will. Oh, I didn't come with any nuts and bolts. friend Matt coming around in a minute to uh, help me with the sink. Um, I know there's been loads of suggestions about what to do with the staining of it but specifically I'd like him to help me with that crack there. It's a bit of a chip as, a, as well as a crack but that bit there is a little bit sharp. I'm not bothered about that because it's old. It's well, it's, I don't know how old it is but it's you know it, that's a bit of charm uh, but possibly like that edge sorted out. 
I'd like this to be brought up to a better colour. I don't know if there's anything you can do with that, but possibly, I'm not sure. Um, and again, with the underneath, I'd like that to be improved upon slightly. Um, and there's some little things like this, which I'm not too sure what they are. So, yeah, see how uh, Matt deals with that one. Well, that has come up well. It's got a lovely, we think that might be brass, but it's got a very, very nice shine to it now. Um, but Matt suggested I plug it up and then hot water and bleach, leave it for a few hours. Happy days. Well, I got a delivery today. This is a 4G router. And um, this is an important bit of kit, obviously, to have on a board, because uh, this will enable me to have 4G signal inside the boat. There is awful signal inside a boat. Um, basically, it's a steel tube, um, and mobile phone signals don't like that. So you have a router. Now, this comes with two antennae, and they screw into the back, and then it sits somewhere like that and in a house or somewhere normal that's what you would use but this is a boat and it's not normal firstly it's made of steel and secondly it's going to be on a canal which tend to be the never in place where mobile phone signals particularly good even in like urban areas like london it's there's always little black spots so this is going to be next to useless in the boat so what you do is i've got a 4g exterior antennae which is a dual polarized so it goes up and across omnidirectional which means that it takes it takes the the two polars takes all the signal from all of that stuff and then it's omnidirectional which means basically it chucks it out everywhere so that's the plan for that so that will be mounted on the roof which i'm hoping will look quite quite good um and feed the aerials through, they'll come through the same conduit as the solar panels will, and they will come somewhere into the boat and plug into the back of there. There are two SMA sockets on the back of that. The other important thing about this is that it is chargeable through a USB charger, which is important because you want it constantly plugged in, but you also want it plugged into a 12 volt or anything like that. You don't want battery powered ones. Well, I mean, you can you can have it, but it's just a pain in the, well, you know, there you go. So that's that. Um, next things for me to crack on with is the bathroom and the bedroom. Um, I can't work, I can't do anything with a dinette because literally all my stuff's here. So, and I can't quite get my head around the fact that that needs to go somewhere else. But the bathroom, I'm getting a shower enclosure delivered tomorrow, um, which is from a caravan uh, site. Not like physically a caravan site, a caravan website. Um, the reason it's caravan and not marine is twofold. Well, no, it's not. It's onefold. It's price. Caravan stuff is cheaper than marine stuff. Go figure. But caravans also, like marine stuff, need a lower ceiling height. So this is a 1750 um, shower enclosure. The stuff you'd have at home tends to be 1850. And then you put on a 50 shower tray, um, bring it up to 1900. In a boat, that would bring me, well, I'd, you'd be out the side, you'd be out the top of the boat. So I've got to have a shallow shower tray, as shallow as I can get which I think is about 40 mil. If anyone knows anything else, let me know. I'm trying to find 25 mil, which won't cost the earth. So let me know if you know anywhere. But um, 70 by 70 quadrant shower is what I'm going for. So I need to fit the panel behind it for where the gulper tray is gonna be. I need to cut a, f a hole in the floor for the gulper, uh, for the whale gulper. Um, and then I need to put a box on the back for where the toilet's gonna be, because I think that's gonna get delivered this week as well. So lots of activity bathroom wise. Bedroom wise, I need to build a bed and I need to put a frame around the tank. Um, Paul has put in the weld for the tank. So I need to build a frame around that and then start to work out how that kind of day bed thing's gonna work and everything like that. So plenty to do there as well. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go and get myself some dinner. Look after yourselves, take care. Until next time, bye bye.